You have now reached the final module of the Horse Council of British Columbia Emergency Preparedness Training Series. In this module, we are going to discuss rescue and recovery. We are going to do a brief overview of considerations during specific emergency events or when an animal becomes entrapped. This will only provide a 30,000 foot view of rescue and response. HCBC provides funding for more extensive training in emergency response. You can contact the office for more information on the emergency response training program. As you can see, this list is the same as the list of possible risks from previous modules. The greatest risk to both the handlers and the animals during response to an event is injury or death. And the greatest risk to the handlers are often the animals. And the primary ways to mitigate risk is through training, only using experienced handlers, utilizing low stress and safe handling methods, wearing the appropriate footwear, clothing, and gloves, and making sure you contain all loose animals as quickly as possible. We are now going to cover the most important aspects and considerations for response and rescue. First and foremost, always perform a risk assessment. The safety or well-being of rescue personnel will always take precedent over that of an animal's. Do not get caught up in a moment. Do not make yourself a secondary victim. Floods are the most frequent natural hazard in Canada. They can occur at any time of the year and are most often caused by heavy rainfall, rapid melting of a thick snowpack, ice jams, or the failure of a natural or man-made dam. During a flood event, the entities impacted include all animals in the flood area. The impact on the animals would be rated as moderate to catastrophic and may include pain and suffering, hypothermia, loss of housing or containment facilities, loss of feed, and water. During a flood event, if animals are unable to be evacuated, you must ensure that they can get to higher ground on their own. Do not lock them up in barns or paddocks, nor tie them up to fences, buildings, or trees. You should never release animals onto roads unless the roads are closed to traffic. All animals have the ability to swim, except for chickens, so give them a chance to escape on their own. Horses can withstand water up to their bellies for 48 to 72 hours. And all livestock have a natural instinct to move away from floodwaters. They generally seek higher ground if possible. All animals that are loose or unable to be contained at the farm or facility will need to be relocated to the designated temporary housing facility. Any animals that become stranded will have to be provided feed until rescue can occur or water subsides. Water rescue is the most dangerous of all technical rescue. If animals require rescue from water, there must be a risk assessment performed and it should only be undertaken by individuals trained in water rescue. Over the past several years, we have learned that wildfires are a very real and continual threat to British Columbia and that they have a significant impact on the livestock in the province, including horses. The entities impacted during a wildfire event 
are all the animals in the fire area. The impact is considered moderate to catastrophic and may include pain and suffering, loss of housing and containment, loss of feed, and access to water. If you are unable to evacuate the animals during a wildfire event, open gates or cut fences to allow the animals to escape on their own, but do so only if it is safe and the roads are not open to traffic. Do not lock horses up or tie them up. They must be able to flee the fire on their own. If able to do so, put some indicator of ownership on animals, such as painting an address or phone number on them. This will allow for easier identification when animals are captured. And make sure you remove any nylon halters or blankets from the horses if possible, as they will melt to the animal if the animal is near the fire. Animals do not begin to fear fire until they can smell the smoke and feel the heat. Once their senses pick up on the smoke and heat, it can invoke varying reactions, including nervousness, panic, aggressiveness, resistive behavior, and attempts to escape. Horses in particular will panic at an approaching fire their instinct will be to flee. They are often not easily handled or managed during a fire event, and extreme caution needs to be used at all time when handling them. This elevated fear level can last for several days after the fire. This is a major consideration for animals evacuated to evacuation sites. Animals are often injured, fleeing from the fire and from first responders. They can blindly run away with no regard to where they are going or what is in their path. If animals are burned or exposed to excessive smoke, veterinary care will be required. This is a photo of a horse that was badly burned in a fire. Animal health response teams will need to be dispatched to the site of the fire, the evacuation location, or the animals transported to a veterinary clinic. As we discussed in the animal health section, burns are extremely painful and require specialized treatment. And in many cases, when the burns are too severe, the animal will require euthanasia. We are now going to provide a general overview of rescue techniques for moving recumbent horses or assisting entrapped horses. Once again, this is only intended to provide some general guidelines. It is not an in-depth training. Several of the following videos are from training sponsored by HCBC and utilizing their rescue dummy, Clamity. The following is a list of considerations when lifting or moving a large recumbent animal. First, you should never drag any animal by their head, legs, or horns. These are not handles, and you can seriously injure or even possibly kill the animal by doing this. Always stay away from the legs of a recumbent animal, trying to work along their spine. As discussed in an earlier module, horses have the ability and will kick you while lying down and even while sedated. Sedation may be required when moving a recumbent horse. This must be done under the direction of a veterinarian and only as a tool of last resort, as there is great risk involved with sedation out in the field. You can use a blindfold and earplugs to keep an animal calm. If they cannot see it and cannot hear it, they will not fear it. 
When trying to assist a horse in standing up, you should never pull on their head as they need the movement of their head in order to stand up. And during a rescue, horses should have halters on them with long leads so someone has control of the horse if and when it stands up. For a recumbent horse, large animals can be used using heavy duty tarps, sheets of plywood, or modified slings. The top photo is a trampoline mat that had strapping attached to it and is used as a sling for moving horses. The bottom photo shows the use of a large canvas tarp to move a sedated horse into a trailer. You will want to move them the shortest distance possible. And keep in mind, they are very heavy and moving them will take several adults to do. A forward assist is used to move a horse forward or upwards or lift them up out of something. To perform a forward assist, you will first need a piece of wide strapping or webbing. It will need to be a minimum of three inches wide and have looping at both ends. A good example of this is using a toe strap that you can buy at an auto or hardware store. The strapping is placed around the shoulders and then up through the front legs. For a forward assist, you will need to take one end of the strapping and thread it through the end loop on the other end of the strapping so there is just one strap coming out between the horse's front legs. You can then pull the horse forward or upwards using this one strap. A modified forward assist was used in the bottom picture. The strapping was wrapped around their shoulders and threaded one loop through another and then lifted upward from their shoulder. They did this because they were unable to get the strapping between the horse's front legs. The backward assist is used for moving or pulling a horse backwards. As an example, if you have to remove a recumbent horse from a trailer. As with the forward assist, you will need a strap or webbing that is a minimum of three inches wide and has loops on both ends. The strapping will be put around the front of the hips of the horse and then threaded back through the back legs at equal lengths. Unlike the forward assist, the straps are left separate as you will pull on both straps at the same time. The horse is then pulled backwards with the strapping. As seen in this video, the tail can be used to help guide the horse out of the trailer, but it should never be used as the primary contact point for moving the horse, and it should only be used by someone who is trained and aware how to properly use a tail knot on a horse. A sideways assist is used for maneuvering a horse where a direct forward or backward assist will not work. As you can see in this video, it is a combination of a modified forward assist and a backward assist used to move the horse out from under and away from the post. A vertical lift is used to lift a horse up such as from a ditch or a dugout. A sling is created by putting strapping right behind the shoulders or in the wither area and right in front of the hips or on the flank area and lifting the horse upwards. It is critical though that a strap is placed across the chest of the horse connecting the front lift straps together 
so the horse does not dump out. As you can see in the top right picture, a breast collar was used to connect the strapping. In the bottom picture, a custom made piece of strapping was attached to keep the strap in place. Once the animal is lifted off the ground, the horse will relax and not struggle. Here is an example of a modified vertical lift that is used to bring a horse up an embankment. They used a forward assist for the front of the horse and then the placement of the flank strap in a vertical lift for the back of the horse. We'll now not only wrap up module nine, but also the training series with a quick review of the key points of this module. This module is only intended to provide a 30,000 foot view of rescue and recovery. Human safety always takes precedent. Scared and stressed animals are very dangerous. Do not tie or lock animals up during a flood or fire event. Water is the most dangerous rescue of all rescues. Animals should never be drug by their head, leg, or horns. There are multiple methods for moving or lifting recumbent horses. And training is highly recommended for anyone who may be involved in rescue. You have now completed the Horse Council of British Columbia Disaster Preparedness for Volunteer Training.